All right, how's it going everybody? I hope you're having a great day. Today we're gonna to be unboxing and reviewing two fragrances sent to me by the folks over at Devane Parfums. Uh, they're just a clone house. They're, they're based in Spain, uh, so they do a lot of stuff over in Europe. They've got a team of perfumers, um, so they sent me two fragrances and a catalog of kind of all their other fragrances that they do. So yeah, they're a clone house. They, they do a lot of clones, so I don't even know how many. This is the whole collection. So it goes up to 918, oh, 924. So you have 924 different clones, uh, male clones, female clones, unisex, whatever, you know, suits your fancy, they have it. Um, so yeah, so I figured I'd check them out, uh, review them for you guys, do a little unboxing. Um, so the clones that I got were Carolina Herrera, uh, Carolina Herrera, Bad Boy, um, and then Noir Extreme by Tom Ford. Okay. So yeah, let, enough chit chat. Let's uh, let's just unbox them. You know, everybody wants to smell good. Nobody wants to spend a ton of money. So let's see if these ones are worth it. Okay. So yeah, so actually right off the bat, the box, the presentation is pretty nice. It is embossed and it does have a matte finish to it. Uh, so it's a little nicer box than the alt fragrances. However, you will notice just like a lot of the clones these days, they're trying to give you the best bang for your buck. So the box doesn't have anything about which one it is. There's just a little sticker on the back that says Devane 295 or Devane 242. And then you just have to look up which one that's a, a clone of. Um, so yeah, so, you know, I'll, I'll throw a link to their website. Uh, they're not paying me or anything for this video. So I'll, I'll try and just, you know, give you the rundown, give you honest opinions on it. Um, but I will, yeah, I will put a link to their website in the description, okay? So this is the first one. This is the Noir Extreme Clone, okay? So on the front, it just literally, it just says Devane Ohm. 295. It's 100 milliliters, okay? Uh, I think these are usually around 40 bucks on their website, so not too bad, kind of mid-range for clones. Um, it's got a, wow, that's that's a real wood. The cap is made out of actual wood. It's not fake wood. Uh, and then it has like a D kind of scrolled into it. Metal atomizer, metal collar, okay? So it is a crimp collar, which is nice. Um, that's a little different from the alt fragrances and some of the other fragrance colognes that I've seen. Um, yeah, so nothing else too crazy about it. Decent uh, presentation. Maybe I would give it a six out of 10. So a little step up from the bare minimum, but it's still not very much. So for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Noir Extreme by Tom Ford, so that one was released in, I believe it was 2015, uh, and it was made by Sonia Constant. Uh, she's a great perfumer. She actually, she just won an award just the other day for um, Narciso Rodriguez uh, Musk Noir Rose. It was one of the Musk Noir, it was one of the Narciso Rodriguez women's uh, musk flankers that she did. And she just won Perfume of the, Perfume of the Year Award. So um, she's really good. She did a couple other really big ones. Uh, what's that leather one? Um, ombre Leather. She did Ombre Leather. That's a killer fragrance. Anyway, so it, the original fragrance, which I have a little sample of, it scores really well on Fragrantica, 4.43 out of five. So that's over my 4.0 or higher, which I usually like to do. Um, and the notes of this one are supposed to be uh, cardamom, nutmeg, saffron, mandarin orange, and neroli in the top. And then middle notes of kulfi. I don't know what that is, K-U-L-F-I. Let me know in the comments. I'm actually not familiar with that. Uh, rose, mastique, or lentesic, lentesic? I don't know what that is either. So they got some, some interesting uh, fragrance notes in it. Uh, orange blossom and jasmine. And then base notes of, you know, the classic stuff, vanilla, amber, woody notes, and sandalwood, okay? So yeah, so I've, I've smelled uh, the original a bajillion times before. It's actually a really good fragrance. So it's, I think it's deserving of the 4.43. Um, so let's give it a spray. Let's see how the atomizer works. Um, try not to get it all over the little magazine. The magazine is pretty cool. It actually, I don't know if it comes with all the orders, but yeah, it just goes through all of the, all the fragrances and what the equivalent is, uh, so yeah. Okay, it actually has a good atomizer. So it's not like a little, you know, it's not spitting it out at you and it's not like a shotgun. So that's actually pretty decent. Um, 
and I can smell it from here, okay? Very ambery, warm, spicy. I would say moderate projection, not, not super strong, but moderate projection from this one. And just even off of memory is very similar. I would say maybe 90% similar with this one. There's some subtle differences if I do recall. Let's see, let's see, hold on. Cause that's, that's close. All right, let's give this one a spray. Come on, there we go. All right. Okay, okay, so maybe it's a little bit sharper. They're very similar though. Okay, so maybe more than 90% similar. It's about as strong as the original. I know the Tom Ford fragrances are usually, they got a good amount of strength to them, but uh, yeah, I think they're both around moderate. Um, so I'm not gonna give them any docked points for, uh, for the strength. Yeah, decent projection. I'm not sure about longevity. You know, the original has pretty good longevity, but I, I really don't know about the cologne one. Uh, so I'll just keep you guys updated on, on that one. Yeah, the smell itself is really good. The jasmine does come through. It's very well blended. So they've got a good team over there. Very woody. Almost has not an old school feel to it. Um, it's not very dated, but it does kind of have a, almost a nostalgic smell to it. Yeah, but the woody and the sandalwood notes really come through. I don't know what kulfi is, so I'm not really sure if I'm smelling it or not. You get the nutmeg. You don't get a whole lot of the cardamom. You don't get a whole lot of the mandarin orange. It's very, it really is a noir extreme. You know, it's very a dark fragrance. A little bit of the saffron comes through. It's not too metallic, right? They're not using any of those super metallic uh, chemical ingredients. Um, yeah, I, overall I would give the smell itself probably an 8.6 out of 10. It's really solid. Uh, so that one's really good. I like this one. This one's gonna be a go. Uh, I don't have any, you know, again, I'm not like sponsored by them or anything. So I don't have any 10% um, off codes or anything for you guys on this one. I'll look around, see if I can find something. But if they're running a special, just might as well look for it. Um, so yeah, let's, let's unbox the Carolina Herrera one. And this is, yeah, this is a clone of Bad Boy, the original. I really like the Bad Boy Cobalt. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think Cobalt's honestly kind of better than the OG one. OG one only scores like a, what, like a 3.6 or something. I agree with it, honestly. It's it's good, but it's not amazing. Let's see, 3.55, so you know, eh, decent. This one was launched in 2019. Okay, so yeah, Quentin Bish, Luis Turner. So I don't know Luis Turner, but Quentin Bish. So they got some, you know, some good folks on that. Um, let's see how the clone of it went. Let's see how they did. Pop this open, exact same. So here's, here's the only difference is that it's slightly yellower liquid in this one. And here's the reason why. So the base notes of uh, Carolina Herrera's Bad Boy does not include any vanilla. It's tonka bean and cacao. Tonka bean would be, um, Tonka bean, they're using Kumarin, okay? Um, but other than that, yeah, cocoa, cacao, they're using like a chocolate van or something like that, but there's no vanilla is the key. So vanillin, not ethyl vanillin, but vanillin, real vanillin uh, over time will turn yellow and it will discolor your liquid. It doesn't matter, I don't care. Um, but yeah, that's one of those things. It's just the sunlight, uh, it does change some of the molecules over time and one of them is the discoloration from vanillin. Um, but that's the only difference. Otherwise, every single bottle is gonna look the exact same, except it'll have the number. It doesn't have the fragrance that it's a clone of, which is, you know, uh, one of the, it's just one of those things. Um, you just kind of have to memorize which one is which, I guess. Um, so yeah, so top notes of this one are supposed to be uh, white pepper, bergamot, pink pepper, okay, so nice and bright and fresh. Uh, middle notes of sage and cedarwood, okay, so nice woody middle notes. Base notes of tonka bean and cacao, okay. So yeah, so let's give it a try. I don't have a sample tester of this one, but I have smelled it a bajillion times, so uh, you know, it, it should be pretty straightforward. I'll tell you if it is at least reminiscent of it, and I can at least let you guys know if it's well blended or if it's a good fragrance overall or not. Uh, even though I can't directly. Wow, that's strong. Wow. There's some fruitiness to it though. What, was there fruity? No, okay. 
somehow I'm detecting some sort of a fruitiness and almost like a bubblegum sweetness, almost an Invictus type sweetness. It is very similar. Um, so if you like Carolina Herrera Bad Boy and you don't want to pay a ton of money, this one's actually really good. Pink pepper, I've worked a lot with pink pepper. I haven't worked a lot with white pepper. So I'm assuming that that's kind of a sharp, uh, different sort of a spiciness than regular pepper notes. The bergamot sort of comes through, nice top notes. The, the woodiness comes through. I don't really detect a whole lot of the sage, but again, in the original, I don't really detect a whole lot of sage either. And then of course, yeah, you get sort of that sweetness from the, the tonka bean and the cacao from the kumarin. Um, yeah, that's actually, it's not bad. I, you know, people give it a 3.55. I'll probably give this one maybe a 7.5 to an eight out of 10. It's well done and well blended. So if you like the real fragrance, I would say go for it. I personally, I'm not a super big fan of this one as much as the Cobalt version, um, but, but they're both pretty decent. Uh, I would say if you're going for the OGs and you're trying to get the real fragrance, then go for the Cobalt. Um, but if you're trying to go for a cologne, then go for this one over, over buying the other one, uh, the real deal. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. So yeah, so I think out of the two, my favorite is definitely gonna be Noir Extreme, just because it is the better fragrance. But overall, they're not bad colognes. Uh, the presentation is a little bit better uh, than some other fragrance companies, but the one thing is, yeah, they just give you a number. They don't give you the name of the fragrances on there, but. Yeah, not bad. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'll throw a link to their website if you guys are interested in checking them out, uh, seeing what they got, because they do have a lot. It's like almost a thousand uh, fragrances. So yeah, let me know what, what you guys think in the comments. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.